This is America's Workforce, the voice of working families in Northern Ohio. One solid hour of fact-finding features, in-depth interviews, informative news segments, and practical consumer reports. Tune in now and every weekday afternoon from 4 to 5 as we stand up for you, your family, and our community. Now, here's your host, Ed Flash Ferris. GOP once again shows its hatred toward organized labor. John Kasich to privatize prisons. Meanwhile, Ohioans planning a protest for the governor-elect. Most people say, hey, tax the rich. And today in the broadcast, the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades and Lake County Commissioner Dan Troy. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Wednesday, January 5th edition of America's Workforce. We call it Labor Radio 1490. WERE. Chance of snow tonight. Looks like a snow showers tonight, tomorrow, Friday, maybe even going into Saturday. Overnight low, uh, 24, 27. Mid-20s for a high and also for a low next couple of days. All right, we have uh, two featured guests joining us today. Jimmy Williams, who is general president of the Painters and Allied Trades, will be joining us. And uh, he's got three things he's going to get into. He was one of about a dozen labor leaders who met with uh, President Obama late last month. And uh, all these labor leaders got together, told him the issues that are concerning working Americans and what Obama has to do about it. So he'll talk about that. He'll also talk about the election. He's got a really good piece. He says the uh, IUPAT political philosophy in this past election was summed up in a phrase we yelled at every stop on our coast-to-coast bus tour. We're following the unemployment lines, not party lines. Our winners last November were working family winners, not just Democrats or Republicans. Now, as the members of the 112th United States Congress prepare to be sworn in, we are ready ourselves to once again take this message to Capitol Hill. The fight didn't stop on Election Day. It continues to go on every day. On November 30th, Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders delivered a speech to the Senate that truly explains the attack against working families and how the people we elected have taken sides against each other and even worse, against us. I've directed this communications department to place a video on YouTube. We'll talk about that. It's uh, YouTube.com. Go IUPAT. There's a forward slash right before Go IUPAT check out that video. He points out today in North America, over 17% of Americans and Canadians are out of work. The official stats were listed at 9.8%, but the rest have either given up on claiming unemployment and are homeless and left on their own. They're not even counted anymore. And we've addressed that on the show many, many times. So we'll get into that. Also, Something else we've been talking about with the painters and allied trades, they have a mobile job alert program for members. You know, everybody's got a cell phone today. you got texting and all that. And they have a uh, alert system. They're using the uh, technology that's available to notify people who are out of work that, hey, there's a job. You may have to travel. You know, maybe it's in Boston for a couple of weeks. But whatever the case is, they will find you and tell you where the work is. That's our way of communicating with members. So Jimmy Williams, our first guest right here on America's Workforce. Our second guest is Dan Troy, Lake County Commissioner. He's going to talk about uh, the continued cooperation uh, from bargaining units in Lake County during these tough fiscal times and uh, how working men and women are being treated by the new regime in Columbus, specifically Mr. John Kasich, who has uh, attacked workers, especially public sector workers, said about a month ago that anybody that goes on strike who works for the government is going to be fired. That's what he said. And uh, so the mood coming out of Columbus and how that's going to affect places like Lake County. So Dan Troy, our first guest. Speaking of Kasich, well, we all know where he stands. He has now picked a private corrections consultant and former prison warden to run the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Correction. His choice of Gary Moore, chief executive of a corrections consulting firm, could be a signal. The incoming governor will pursue privatization of the state's prisons and the executive director of a criminal justice group. Kasich said at a news conference to introduce Moore that he will consider enlisting private companies to run more state-owned facilities. Ohio now has two privately operated prisons, one in Grafton, the other in uh, Conneaut. 
Moore moved to the private sector in 2005 after an extensive career working for Ohio's prison system. He served as a deputy director for the Corrections Department for two different administrations. He's also been a warden at three Ohio prisons. In the private sector, he worked for Nashville-based Corrections Corporation of America, which contracts with governments to house prisoners at facilities the company owns and operates. He was managing director for Corrections Corporation from, from 07 to 09. This corporation was a client of his consulting firm. Moore correctional insight before and after his employment with the company. Moore agreed with Kasich that increasing the number, number of privately run prisons in Ohio should be an option. He said input from the private sector could help the department find ways to save money. And you know how they're going to do that. They hire people at half the wages and give them hardly any benefits. So that's the course for the future of Ohio. There's going to be some protests, though. Ohio activists will protest at uh, Kasich's inauguration. Number of events that he has scheduled for this weekend starting on Saturday. Backers of the Defend Ohio campaign will march to the State House in Columbus with signs and slogans in support of public employees and public services. Governor-elect Kasich is using public sector workers as scapegoats, said spokesman Mark Auerbach. He wants Ohio citizens to blame the unions for a fiscal crisis caused by the recession, years of unwarranted tax cuts for the wealthy, and spiraling health care costs. The group says Kasich is cynically using the budget crisis to advance a long-standing anti-union and pro-privatization agenda. Like many other newly elected governors, Kasich is making an assault on unions, the centerpiece of his plans. He said he will rescind the right of 14,000 state-financed child care and home care workers to form unions, also wants to prohibit teachers from striking. Ohio Republicans have also broadcast plans to cut budgets for schools, universities, and Medicaid. Defend Ohio members are concerned that Kasich has promised not to use $400 million in federal stimulus funds the state was due to receive for the 3C Railroad Project. We don't understand why Kasich has been in such a hurry to turn down federal money that could provide jobs for Ohioans and support our public schools in a time of crisis. His refusal of the race to the top money means fewer jobs for teachers, fewer school programs, and more crowded classrooms for kids at Auerbach. Politicians in Illinois are also attacking teachers with a bill that would make it easier to fire teachers and forbid unions to bargain over issues ranging from school closures to class size to the length of the school day. And in New York State, public sector unions protested their own governor, this time a Democrat. The Public Employees Federation and Civil Service Employees Association held six candlelight vigils around the state December 29th, protesting the layoff of nearly 900 state workers by the outgoing governor, David Patterson. So it's not just happening here. It's all over the place. Meanwhile, he'll love this story. With major issues like jobs and the economy straining for attention, House Republican leaders took a giant step yesterday to solving the nation's problems when they boldly acted, drumroll please, to change the name of the Education and Labor Committee to the Education and Workforce Committee. (laughs) They don't like the word labor because when you say labor, you mean labor unions, so they took that out. They hate it. The Education and Labor Committee was founded in 1867 and retained that name, except for a brief time when it was split into separate Education and Labor Committees through both Democratic and Republican majorities. That was going on for 122 years. Well, in 1995, the last time a group of loudmouth extremists, remember Newt Gingrich and his gang, he, um, he stripped the word labor from the committee door. Then in 2006, the Democrats, when they got power back they put it back in the committee name so yesterday republicans in charge so labor's out labor's out unbelievable meanwhile most americans think the united states should raise taxes for the rich to balance the budget this according to a 60 minutes vanity fair poll released yesterday now as we know obama signed into law the two-year extension of the bush era tax cuts 
And, of course, the Republicans pushed for that. Well, listen to what America says. 61% of Americans polled would rather see taxes for the wealthy increased as a first step to tackling the deficit. 61%. The next most popular way, chosen by 20%, was to cut defense spending. 4% would cut the Medicare government health insurance program for the elderly. 3% only would cut Social Security. Ask which part of the world they would fix first. The largest proportion of respondents, 36%, chose Washington compared with 23% who picked the Middle East. 14% chose Haiti. The poll included a random sample of just over 1,000 adults across the United States from November 29th through December 2nd. So you, you see what's happening here? I mean, you notice this Washington disconnect. What the people say and what Congress does, completely different. People say, no, we should tax the rich, so what do they do? They extend the Bush tax cuts. Um, manufacturing, we talked about this yesterday. People want manufacturing jobs, so what do they do? They send the jobs overseas. Come on now. Health care, what about the health care bill? Health care bill has a whole lot of benefits, so what does the GOP want to do? They want to eliminate them. Major, major disconnect between the people in America and what's happening in Washington. All right, we have to break. It is 11 past the hour. You're listening to America's Workforce. When we come back, Jimmy Williams, one of the painters and allied trades, right here on Labor Radio 1490 WERE. Sheet Metal Workers Local 33. More than 4,500 hardworking, highly skilled craftspersons building communities across Northeast Ohio and West Virginia. When we made this exciting instant game from the Ohio Lottery, we didn't just turn up the prizes, we cranked them to the max. It's Maximum Millions with a top prize of $2 million, $73 million in total prizes, and 20 chances to win on every ticket. Turn up the fun. Turn up the excitement. Scratch one today. Maximum Millions from the Ohio Lottery. Play to the max. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Please play responsibly. America's workforce is being brought to you in part by the Communication Workers of America. Working. Everybody has to do it to pay the bills, to build a better life for ourselves, to build a better world for the next generation. You need a career. You need a future. You need the men and women who built this city working with you. The brothers and sisters of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 38. To build a career to have that future. Just listen to organized member John Schaefer. There are drastic differences in union and non-union benefits. And the improvement in health and pension and wages was incredible. To say the least, I finally feel safe. I'm secure, I'm confident in the job I do for me and my family. Live the great American dream. Join the men and women of the IBEW Local 38. Call us at 216-621-3090. We built this city. Now you can be a part of it all. Pick up the phone. Call 216-621-3090 and make it happen now. All right, coming up to 16 past the hour. Good afternoon. Welcome back to America's Workforce Labor Radio, 1490 WERE. Cloudy with snow next couple of days. Overnight low 24, the high 27. We're stuck in that uh, temperature range. Great news for the Buckeyes. They won the Sugar Bowl last night. It was close. OSU dominated the first half. Really good first half. But the Razorbacks came back, nearly won it. An interception by Ohio State ended that rally. Buckeyes won it 31-26. And the Cavaliers are back in action tonight hosting Toronto. That's a 7 o'clock game. Let's go to Live Line. Welcome our first of two guests. And he's a Buckeye fan. That's Jimmy Williams, head of the uh, Painters and Allied Trades. Jimmy, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, Flash. How you doing? I'm good. Boy, that was a nice game last night. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, they got lucky with that interception. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's never, never easy. It's never a straight line. You know, everybody's got to be sitting on the edge of their seat, you know? I'll tell you, well, I'm glad they, I'm glad they put it away. It was another big win for Ohio State. Yeah, sweet stuff. So how you been? How was your uh, holiday and your new year so far? Uh, everything, uh, everything's been good. I mean, you know, work's still, uh, tight and, uh, you know, uh, you, you kind of feel bad for the members right now because they, they're not getting that full paycheck. Yeah. So, uh, 
you know, you just try to hang in there and offer them a, a little bit of hope. Yeah, what's the uh, the official numbers? And I'm, I'm hearing all kind of stuff. You know, we got the unemployed, the people <clears throat> that are uh, not looking for work. I mean, we talked about the stats. I mean, typically it's uh, the, the, the numbers the Labor Department gives us is 9.8%. It's more like a 16% because a lot of people haven't been uh, looking for work or given up looking for work because they can't find anything. And then, you know, in the building trades, I know in the building trades it's been hanging around 20%, and those, that's, that's the official numbers. So it's been really, really bleak. Do you see any, any improvement here going into the new year? Well, the, the only real shot that we've had, and, and I'm speaking, you know, basically for the painters, was the... Uh, uh, stimulus package. It really did help put our members to work on some of the bridges, you know, the, and the road work that they painted. So, I mean, you know, uh, that has helped. But, you know, when you say 16%, you could double that number conservatively in the construction industry. And uh, it, I would say at least 30% unemployment. And it's 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 really bad out there. Wow, thirty percent unemployment. Now I know you met with Obama. You and a number of labor leaders uh, met with well, him last month. In fact, who was in the room? How many other labor leaders there? Well, there was there was ten of us in the room. It was uh, it was an honor to be uh, selected to go uh, to speak to the president. I've been to the White House uh, well over a dozen times, but this was the most intimate setting that we had that, that really looked like uh, a business meeting where the president basically went around the room and asked uh, each individual their opinion on, uh, you know, uh, the situation. Now, you know, uh, I've always been a, a true trade unionist, and, you know, with Rich Trump in the room as one of the leaders, that's who speaks for me. Mm -hmm. uh, the, only per the only membership I speak for is the painters. And when the president came to me, I just basically said that. And I, I kind of explained to him that, you know, this year I had to write eight letters to our members, uh, wives, who committed suicide. Crazy, crazy thing. They're, they don't have a job. They don't have unemployment benefits. And they don't have health care benefits. And they give up. And when the meeting was over, the president grabbed me, flashed, and he said, can I talk to you? And uh, I was going to be a little fresh and say, well, I'll check my appointment, but I didn't. And I, I said, uh, yeah, he said, could I help you and write letters to them? And I could see in his eyes his true concern, you know what I mean, for, for the working families. And, and, you know, it kind of touched me. And it's kind of sad stuff because, you know, uh, when you see these members that, that, that do that, you just, you can't do anything for them. Right. Because the, the last letter I write them is that you're not entitled to a death benefit when you commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I, it's a little sad, but it's really the state of the economy and state of what's going on out there. And, you know, uh, what he really needs is a little cooperation here in the Beltway in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Yeah, that's that shows the desperation that's happening in America. My gosh! So Obama is going to help write some of those letters. So obviously he was very, very moved. Then I'm telling you, uh, I was moved by his uh, sincerity. Yeah, because you know, I mean, you get a shot like that. You know, what are you going to say to the president of the United States? Now I was think, sitting there thinking of my mother and my father, and and you know, the, my upbringing and. I'm saying, here I am sitting next to the most powerful man in the world. What am I going to say to him? Right. And uh, that's the only thing I could really think of because he's heard it all. And I look at the problems that I have running, uh, you know, our organization. I can just imagine how bad it is for him. I mean, you know, all these decisions and, you know, all the things he has to do, it's it's just uh, mind-boggling, really. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the list of uh, labor leaders. I see the... Uh... Joe Hansen of the United Food and Commercial Workers. I see uh, Randy Weingarten of the teachers, Leo Gerard of the steel workers, the service employees. Uh, Ask me, Jerry McEntee. Um, let's see, the letter carriers were there. Of course, you were there. The UAW was there. So that's an impressive list. Now, everybody had a chance to say something about their respective unions to Obama. Is that what? Is that what happened? Uh -huh. The, uh, the opening of the meeting, uh, Rich Trumka basically gave a statement for organized labor. 
And then uh, the president went around the room and basically asked everybody, you know, what was going on in their organization and, you know, what, if anything, you know, uh, they could bring to his attention. And, you know, I mean, that's the part that really kind of amazed me because I've been in these meetings with Clinton and, and even with Bush one and Bush two, and never did it, it reach that point of, uh, you know, talk to me. Yeah. It was basically they talked at you and, and you just listened. So, I mean, on that, in that part there, it, it showed the, to me just how uh, sincere the guy is. How long did the meeting go? It was supposed to go an hour, and of course, like all meetings, it went about an hour and 55 minutes. And, uh, you know, when we, when we left the meeting, of course, you know, being there before, you've always done that little scene with all the reporters. And we made it a, a you know, a promise that, you know, there'd be only one spokesman, and that'd be Richie. And Richie basically, you know, spoke for everybody. Mm-hmm. How did you leave it? Are you going to meet again? Is there an agenda? Are you going to try to work together? What's the deal? Well, on my particular issue, he's asked me to forward to him uh, the the names of the individuals so that he could personally write a letter to them. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as the, uh, it's going to be a working agenda with the president uh, through Rich Trumka. And, you know, I mean, that's that's very encouraging. Mm-hmm. Now this all happened in December. It happened quite uh, well weeks after the election. Did he did he make any reference to the change on Capitol Hill and how difficult that's going to be for labor? Uh, certainly, and he, you know, and in dealing with that, you know, we were talking about the the problems we have also in dealing with the Congress, and uh, you know, and that's when he kind of just said to uh, to us that he says, you know, listen, I'm willing to work with these people, but you know. I've also got my agenda, and I believe that you know, uh, with the health care bill, I mean that's the first thing out of the out of the box that they're going to take them on. And quite honestly, I think that you know the the more and more we're into the health care, more people are understanding the benefits of it. Mm-hmm. And over the holidays, you get to meet with some of your, you know, some of your neighbors and some of your friends, and you know, of course, that's always a topic of discussion. And basically, they all had kids in college, and I said, well, you know, this will be good. If they kill the health care bill, you'll have to be picking them up once they get out of college, and it won't be covered until they're 26. And they're going, well, what do you mean? So I think that the, uh, the administration has to make it clear the benefits, the pre-existing conditions, all of the things that, that, are, that are so important in that health care bill. Yeah. And I, I really don't see it, it being overturned, but, you know, I hope there's t- not too much... Uh, uh, obstruction of, of the uh, program, and they start worrying about this unemployment rate that's out there and putting America back to work. Yeah, I know the health care thing has kind of got in the way, and, and some of the critics of Obama said, you know, he should have dealt with the jobs first <clears throat> in, instead of health care. And uh, this job situation, I don't know. I'm hearing stories, and maybe you, could, maybe you, you can chime in better than I, that uh, this unemployment, this malaise that we've gotten ourselves in, that the Wall Street bankers got ourselves in, um, is going to go on 5, 10, maybe 15 years. What are you hearing on your end, Jimmy? Well, you know, quite honestly, uh, the, the only positive sign was a little, little bit of, a, of, a, of an upswing in housing. And uh, quite honestly, uh, I spoke to a friend of mine from my neighborhood, and he's in the moving and storage business. Yeah. Now, now think about that. You know, I mean, I never thought of this being a, a, a motivator on the economy. But he said, Jimmy, he said, in the last three months, he said, my business has basically doubled. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad, but he said, you know, I, I've been flat. So he said, people are buying and moving and selling houses. So now, I don't think that's a, an economic indicator, but uh, that, along with some of the other things, I, I can see it it's spiking a little bit. And hopefully, if this Congress is sincere, as they said they are, they're going to do some things to, to help the uh, help the uh, the unemployed. Mm-hmm. All right, Jimmy, you know what? I'm coming up to break time. Can you stay with us for another segment? Sure. Okay, really sure, appreciate no it. We got uh, Jimmy okay. Williams, who's general president of the Painters and Allied Trades. Our website is iupat.org. We'll talk more about the new Congress, and we'll talk about this uh, program. 
how the painters and allied trades are helping people get jobs through their mobile phones. Good stuff. All on Labor Radio 1490 WERA. Plus, we got to Dan Troy, Lake County Commissioner. Back in a few. Don't go away. Sheet Metal Workers Local 33 maintains a reputation of quality through the more than 4,500 highly skilled craftspersons that help build communities across Northeast Ohio and West Virginia every day. If you need heating, ventilation, and air conditioning service, or architectural, industrial, or sheet metal work, Local 33 can help. Members make up a well-trained, drug-free, OSHA-certified workforce committed to furthering the heating and cooling and sheet metal industry. Local 33, an affiliate of the Sheet Metal Workers International Association, spans across four states and has eight district offices, including Akron, Cleveland, Toledo, Vermilion, and Youngstown, as well as Charleston, Parkersburg, and Wheeling, West Virginia. Members of Sheet Metal Workers Local 33 earn competitive wages, strong benefits, including health care coverage and retirement plans, industry upgrade training, and excellent work conditions. To learn more about Local 33, contact them today at 800-527-3834 or learn more at www.smwlu33.org. Build your future with the Cement Masons, Local 404. Call 216-771-3939. We are the Cement Masons, standing tall and proud. Working. Everybody has to do it to pay the bills, to build a better life for ourselves, to build a better world for the next generation. You need a career. You need a future. You need the men and women who built this city working with you. The brothers and sisters of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 38. We built this city. Now you can be a part of it all. Pick up the phone. Call 216-621-3090 and make it happen now. America's Workforce is brought to you in part by the law firm of Clamaco, Lefkowitz, Pekka, Wilcox, and Garofoli. Committed to clients and community and protecting the rights of individuals for more than 35 years. Hey, don't forget when it comes to your eyes, go for the very best. Well-trained professionals, affordability, convenience. To get all three and a whole lot more at Union Eye Care, give them a call today. 1-800-EYE-CARE. Real simple, 1-800-EYE-CARE. Union Eye Care, my family, your family's total vision center. Now with nine locations in Northeast and Ohio, been around for 52 years, and they accept most major insurance programs. So don't mess around, especially when it comes to your eyes. Go for the very best. Go for Union Eye Care. That's 1 800 Eye Care or unioneyecare.com. Chance of snow tonight. Looks like it's going to go that way all the way till uh, Saturday. Lows and highs in the mid to upper 20s. Let's go back to our live line. We got to Jimmy Williams of the Painters and Allied Trades. Our website is iupat.org. Hey, Jimmy, I got to thank you for setting me up with uh, Ted Massanello. And I, I saw it on your website. We talked about this a couple months back about the USA Coffee Company. And uh, we've become very good friends. And I have a question for you. I know you had that meeting with Obama at the White House last week. Did you tell him about Obama Java? <laughs> yeah, and, and so did Teddy. Okay, <laughs> it's a, you know, with with the president's uh, background coming from Hawaii, okay, he, uh, he he he's kind of spun it pretty good. So I think that uh, he was trying to get the, the president to use that coffee in the White House. So uh, you know, knowing how persistent Teddy is, I'm sure he'll he will do his best. Oh yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah. I'll tell you, he's so personable. We've had him on the show. And I want to yeah. bring him back. I'm going to give him a plug here. His uh, phone number, it's toll-free, 888 581 That's one. That's toll-free, 888 581 And it's usacoffeecompany.com. That's his website. And I'll tell you, it's really good coffee. I'll tell you, I, I bought a gift basket for my sister, and uh, I am fueled. I am fueled by USA Coffee. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, hey, it's not a bad thing, you know, buy something made in America. I love that. Union made. Yeah, yeah I yep. pre appreciate that. We we need all the help we can get, you know. Let's talk a little bit here. You know, Congress, the, the new Congress, the 112th Congress uh, being sworn in today. Um, I, there's some changes, and I know the, the important the thing about America today. We hear so much, and I, I, maybe it's because of the Fox Newses and all the cable channels, MSNBC. You got one that's pro Democrat, pro Republican, and, and you know, and this partisan politics has just gotten in the way. When are we going to get down to you know talking about the real issues? So what if it's a Democratic thing? So what if it's a Republican thing? We got to get jobs going. How do we get this this debate stimulated in America and get the politics out of it? Can that happen? 
Well, I, there's an old saying, you know, follow the money. Yeah. And if you follow the money and really look at what's going on, we're we're lobbying uh, Congress right now. A lot of these uh, foreclosed construction jobs, uh, when Wall Street shut down financing, there's tremendous amount of opportunities to put people back to work immediately. But what they're doing is they're basically sitting on these projects, sitting on the funding. And we've tried to make our point to uh, to Congress. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, my people are going to go to what I call as a, a working man senator who really cares about the, the jobs. And that is uh, our own Sherrod Brown and Bob Casey. Okay? Mm-hmm. And get the two of them and explain the situation of what's going on. Out in L.A., there is maybe 10 different projects that could start tomorrow. But what they're doing is they're sitting on them. For the profits, and they're going to they're going to they're going to let them go, tr- let them trickle out one at a time, until the mar- until they get their market price, and it's all being controlled by Wall Street. And what we have to do is is make Congress aware of what's going on. And uh, my political department's put together a pretty intense memo on that that we're going to share with the two senators, and hopefully they can you know. They can take something that's going to be jobs that are right there now, that the money's there for, that they're holding in escrow, and they're just sitting watching the market. So, so, you know, that's just one of many things that can be done. Uh But, uh, you know, there's got to be something where people do not look at the the, uh, D or the R or the the Tea Party, you know, uh, uh, acronym. And just worry about, you know, uh, putting America back to work. Yeah. Yeah, get the politics out of it. And you're saying so we could probably correct or at least, you know, bring down that unemployment figure right away. There is no doubt in my mind, Flash, no doubt in my mind. And I've looked at this and worked with our our political department on this. And the the AFL-CIO, the building trades have all looked at it. And it's something we have to move. All right. Speaking of moving here, uh, let's talk about this uh, mobile phone program. We've, we've addressed this on the show a couple of times, and, and I see you got a release out on it on how the uh, the painters and allied trades are launching the service to link up jobs with union members via texting. Can you explain how it works? Well, you know, what we did was we basically uh, – there, there's a, and I, I won't plug the company, but there's a company in, in Washington, D.C. That, that made us aware that, you know, in communicating with our membership, you know, and, and, and ironically enough, this afternoon, I got, a, I got a text message right before you went on the air. Uh, Jim, are you ready for Flash's call? It's, uh, you know, this afternoon, and I'm going, wow, you know. Yeah. And this guy that sent me the text, he's about 36 years of age, you know what I mean? And, and just out of my, uh, you know, generation. But that's how uh, a lot of our members and a lot of the, uh, you know, uh, younger generation is communicating today. Right. So we, we instituted this, this you know, uh, program at the IUPAT basically to try to connect. And ironically enough, we found out, and, you know, we're not a big organization, but uh, our, our live line to, to our members is as high a percentage or we basically have a higher percentage than some uh, internationals that are 10 times our size. So this is really clicked with our membership. Now, you know, uh, you know, where our members, and we, we send out notifications all the time through our text messaging uh, service. That's basically, I think we're right around now, 18% of our membership are tied into it, mm-hmm. which is re- really amazing because in any communication that we send out, if you get a 10% response, they say it's good. Yeah. And if you if you can do the tax and pick up eighteen percent or just connect with eighteen percent of your members, so you know hopefully we can improve upon that. Yeah. And uh, you know, hey, getting people to move. There is some jobs in the country on, like I said before, on the stimulus package, uh, but people are going to have to travel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if they're willing to and, travel, the job is there for them. And 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 there you go. Now, and it might not be at their home rate if they're from Chicago. And they have to go to uh, Indiana or they have to go, you know, uh, to New Orleans for a job. They can go, but it's not going to be at the same wage rate that they're making, you know, up there. But it's it's putting food on the table. It is and a keeping job. Them in, and keeping them in benefits, as, as I spoke earlier. I mean, you know, how depressing as it is, if you're looking at your kids and you're looking at your family and all of a sudden you don't have benefits no more, no more for them. 
Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, on the construction industry, that's a big that's a big thing. Right. Yeah, and it's real simple uh, as far as how it works. Members text the first letter of their craft from their mobile phone to uh, 48728. For instance, uh, painters, you text the letter P and then point, uh, then put in uh, 48728. Yep. If it's a glazier, it's G and then 48728 and so on and so forth. So it's, it's pretty mm-hmm. simple and it's effective. I like that. Anything to help the members, you know? Well, we're trying. Yeah. Jimmy, thank you so much for your time. I'll tell you, keep up the fight. And uh, that was really interesting what you told us about the meeting with Obama. And hopefully, um, you know, he'll, uh, I'm, uh, it sounds like he's going to follow up and, and write those letters to the members. Well, who... you know, I, I know he is. Uh, he has a, a good labor assistant that, that, you know, has been contacting us, you know, for the for the information. So I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, maybe offering a little bit of relief. You got it. All right, Jimmy, you have a, a happy new year. We'll talk to you next month, okay, my man? All right. Take care, Flash. Have a, have a good afternoon. All right. You take Bye-bye. care. All right. Jimmy Williams, president, general president of the Painters and Allied Trades. That's IUPAT.org. 40 past the hour. We're going to break. When we come back, Mr. Dan Troy, Lake County Commissioner, talk about uh, what's happening in Columbus and how that's going to trickle down to places like Lake County right after this on Labor Radio 1490 WERE. 